Hey everybody, how's it going? Man, I've been busy <clears throat> packing packing everything. <laughs> I've got about 5,000 packages being picked up on Tuesday. I totally forgot that it was a holiday on Monday. Well, for mail anyway. Um, yeah, so everybody's goodies are on the way. Um, and thank you for all of your comments and questions and requests for bundles and, and whatnot. It was really fun. So I will be, I don't think I can take any more requests for farmhouse bundles. Um, I've got 15 requests right now for another, you know, for, cause I plan to do another you know, set of, or kit of that, you know, with that stuff. <laughs> um, anyway, so I don't know. Some of those people may, you know, change their mind. They may decide they don't actually really want it or whatever. So if you really would like to have one, send me an email. And if anybody, you know, pulls out, then I will, I will let you know. Okay. Um, and I think I have enough requests on the page packs too from, the drawer. <laughs> um, and then, but I can still do env uh, pockets. I, I have lots of, a uh, lots more of the library pockets. So if you would like a bundle of library pockets and the little craft coin envelopes, let me know they're $10 and then I'm charging $3 uh, to cover shipping. So if you'd like one of those, there's 30 library pockets, three different sizes. And then, um, 10 of each size, I should say, and then 10 of the little craft coin envelopes. Okay. So <clears throat> that's, that's business stuff. So anyway, in a lot of those, um, those kits that I showed you guys the other day, they had these little cornmeal bags and these little guys were inspired by my good friend Carla Frizzell who happened to use one in a journal that she was doing a flip through on and I can actually I'll try to find that that um that video and and I'll link it for you it's it's a really beautiful journal Carla Frizzell does some really really cool uh farm style stuff and I I talk about Carla a lot but she really is very inspiring to me and I just want to be like her when I grow up that's all I'm saying so let me, I'm going to make a note so that I don't forget to link to link. I decided I better start making notes about stuff. So I'm, I'm working on it. You guys, um, I actually do have a planner, but it was supposed to like, I was supposed to start using it last August and I just now opened it like a couple days ago <laughs> and wrote some notes in it. So I'm working on it <clears throat> anyway. So if I ever forget something like, like, I know somebody, somebody asked me and I can't remember. I know it's like one of two people, but can't remember who it was. Somebody asked me to send them some pastel color, um, fabrics with their, with their bundle. And I can't remember which of the two people it was. So anyways, if that was you, please remind me. That's all I'm saying. I do. I never get offended when people remind me about stuff. Don't feel like you're nagging me. If, if I do happen to forget something <laughs> anyway, so those are these little, oh my gosh, I just love these little cornmeal bags. They're so cute. So I wanted to make some small journals with the ones that I decided to keep. And, um, I thought, you know, they'd be awesome little covers, but I sort of didn't like the way this corner was. And I know that this is a great little tuck spot potential thing, but I decided I don't really want to do that. So I wanted to get this squared off so that it didn't have that corner cut off like that. I wanted it to be more, you know, squared off like, like that. Okay. So I thought I would just kind of show you guys where I'm headed with my covers on these little guys. So I think I'm going to do, I've got, let's see, four, five, six. I've got eight of them. So I, one of these is kind of like my prototype 
cover so i'm not sure if that one's going to make it to be actually for sale but um but i am going to do these at least seven and then of that size and then i think i will also do some of these now they're both two pound bags but this one is obviously taller and a little narrower than than this one so so this one i think i can i think what i'll do is i will still square it off but i'll make this into a pocket on the inside and then because i'd like that to be the cover most of the you know the the imagery i want that to be on the cover so the these ones will probably wind up being like that but I'm still going to, you know, square them off. Um, and I might do the same thing with some of these larger bags. I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to do larger ones this this go around or not. I probably will, knowing me, because I don't know how to just do, like, a couple. So, anyway, I just wanted to, quit, you know, show you guys what, what I, you know, what I'm doing to square these off. So, first thing is... Um, I have just about every tool, every cutting instrument that I own is on my desk at the moment. So first thing I'm going to do is just shave a teeny bit off of this straight edge of the bag. Okay. And then I'm going to turn, I'm going to flip that out. Okay. So then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side of it. Just, okay, I'll slide it up there so I make sure it's straight. Just, just the teeniest little bit, just so that it, it's actually open. And then, better put my glasses on. Okay, and then, I'm going to cut, I'm going to cut this open. So I'm just going to draw like a, a real light little pencil line right there and when I'm going from each corner to, to cor corner to corner there okay and then oh come on open open do you guys remember those commercials I think it was for Target or something. The lady waiting for them to open and she's going open, open. Um, okay, here, these are good scissors. Okay, and then I'm just going to cut this. And I just made the line just to be sure that I cut it straight. Cut that side off. And then this side. Okay, so on some of these bags... There's actually, you know, cool stuff on there. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't throw that away. I would use, I would save that and use it for something. And I might save these too. I don't know. Um, okay. So then, so, it's, so now we can just pull that little edge out, that little piece out. And now it's like squared off. Okay. So then. these I'm just folding in half and I kind of wanted them so I don't like how this is still kind of floppy like that because it's been folded up for so long it has a tendency to want to you know go back into that shape so to solve that I decided to just add another layer of paper on the inside of this so I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I think this one is the same size as the other one. Some of these little cornmeal bags are different sizes, just ever so slightly. So I'm going to cut this to, it's actually measuring at almost six and a half, but I'm going to cut it to six and a quarter, my paper, six and a quarter by four and a half. And I'm going to do two of those. So I'm going to go 
Do my six and a quarter for, oh my gosh, I have so much crap on my desk right now. Okay. Six and a quarter. And then my four and a half, I'll cut two of these because I'm going to do this on the back also. And it just makes the cover, I think, more sturdy, more durable. Because, I mean, it is old paper and, you know, it's a journal, it's a book that somebody's going to be opening and closing a million times, hopefully. And, um, okay, I don't need that anymore. So see, this will fit inside, inside that. Uh, I mean, I could just glue it there, but no, I want it on the inside. <laughs> anyway, <clears throat> I'm not... I'm not so much worried about this side because once I get this side, once I'm not so worried about the inside. I'm mostly worried about the front. So I'm just going to use a glue stick, handy dandy glue stick. So I've made a lot of stuff since I bought these glue sticks. I bought 30 of them from, from Dick Blick, uh, Blick art materials. I've made a lot of stuff and um, I still have maybe 10 or so left. So I don't know. I'm thinking that they were definitely a good buy. Okay. So I want, I, I, you just got to kind of be careful when you slide that paper in there because it does, it is glue and it does want to stick, but and make sure you put it with the glue up you know, so it's sticking to the right side that you are trying to protect. And then I always, I just can't help it. It's like, I always use the, the baby wipe. Plus I always need to wipe the desk off anyways. So, <clears throat> okay. So that one's done. And then I want to do the back also. So yeah, so I do think that these glue sticks were a good value and I really like the glue. I haven't had any trouble with it. I did sort of think for a minute that it was a little soft, but I think I just kind of got used to it. And so I don't really have the trouble with it being like globby, any, any worse than any other glue stick, you know? Okay. So I want this to be glue side up. Slide that in, make sure it's straight. Okay. So there, okay. And I don't really want to cover this paper on the inside because I like it, you know, it's got a neat texture and I like the little bit of aging that's there. So I definitely don't want to, you know, cover it, but I do want to add something. And I, and I like to have the neat thing about using a bag as a cover is that you sort of have like instant pockets, right? Like that's, that's, what's neat about them. Um, one thing that's neat about them and you have to think about how you're going to close your journal. I mean, some people don't even use closures at all. Like they just, you know, they don't use anything. They just, or maybe they just tie a, you know, piece of fabric or something around the journal. Um, I like to have something attached to my journals so that that little tie doesn't get lost, you know, so it's always there and always attached to the journal, unless you decide to take it off. Anyway, so what I'm thinking to do with these is to just do a tie, like some kind of like seam binding or something like that. And so I will wind up doing an eyelet on each side, okay, of the cover. So I don't really like, and I just like to tell you guys my reasoning for why I do what I do sometimes, because I think it helps maybe to make your journals sort of more like user friendly, you know, like I like them to be, 
um, convenient, you know, so that people are more likely to actually use them. I, because I know that like, if I have something that there's something about it that kind of bugs me, even though I like it, but using it, there's some kind of hassle. I won't use it at all. So anyway, I will choose something else that I also like that's easier to use, you know? So if there's like some kind of really complicated closure, then I won't use that closure. I'll just, it'll just stay unclosed or I just will choose to not use it. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, so that being said, I, I plan to do an eyelet here and here, and that is a little awkward when you have a pocket that's opening right there, I think. Um, and I have done that. So it's, you know, it's not a huge deal, but I thought I would do something different on these. And so I'm going to close these bags up on both sides. This was my prototype, so it's a little wonky, but, um, so I actually did glue this one shut here, but before I did that, um, this one I like better, by the way, and I'll show you why. Um, I like those slotted pockets, you know, where there's just like a slot and then you can just like tuck things in. And so I thought it would be kind of cool to do those along here like that, but that's just more work than I want to do right now. So, so I think I just, you know, I like doing just one on, on the edge here and then one on this edge. So you have a pocket that goes in on each side on the front and the back. So the way I just put those together, trying to make sure I'm using a lot of my scraps of paper, I'm, I'm just going to eyeball this and I'm going to cut this in half and I'm going to use this little panel as kind of like a reinforcement on the edge of this cover. Okay. And I'm going to make a little slot in there. That'll be a pocket. Okay. And I, and I'm not cut and that way I'm not covering up this paper, but I'm also kind of making it more sturdy at the same time with, with craft paper. So let's see, I have to make sure I keep the front and back identified in my head. Okay. So I'm just going to round the corners on this a little bit and I'm just going to glue it right there with the glue stick. And I'm, I want to use the glue stick instead of the art glitter glue because I want to make sure that, that I don't miss any bits of paper um, underneath. Like I, I want to make sure that it's adhered 100% to, to the base paper, you know, get this glue. So what I'm, I guess the reason I'm saying that, I mean, you can use art glitter glue or whatever kind of glue you want, but it, if you're just doing like a skiff of glue or something, or just doing around the edges, you're going to potentially miss little pieces inside. You know what I mean? So I don't want to do that. <clears throat> I might have to go back and touch up around the edges or something. Um, but for now, this is what I'm doing. And it seemed to work fine on, on the other one. So, okay. So I'm going to cover up this thumb hole. Um, <clears throat> I just, my decision to, to make these pockets like this means that I'm sacrificing that little thumb hole. So, but that's okay. So you'll see it did kind of stick there a little bit. So I need to make sure and open that up. And then I'm just going to kind of take my baby wipe and sort of wipe that glue off of that little section. Just, you know, and then as it's drying, I'll just make sure that it stays open a little, a little bit. Okay. And then now not everybody is going to have one of these. This is a little, um, hole punch that I picked up from Hobby Lobby. And the last time I looked at their website, they still had these. I can't remember. It doesn't have any identifying 
like brand on it. I think it, it might be um, the Paper Studio brand. I'm not sure, but I will try to find it on the website. I better link that too. Um, Hobby Lobby Punch. Um, I'll try to link it on their website so you can at least, you know, see, um, see it. And if you want to buy it online, you can, if, if you're not shopping, you know, out and about yet. So, but it's kind of cool because, um, I can, I can get that little slot all the way down if I just take this and just punch it all the way down. And part of the reason I wanted to use this heavier paper is because it works better as a guide for this than like a real soft paper. The only thing I don't like is that it only goes that far in. It's only about maybe three eighths of an inch. I would have preferred for my pocket to be about up here, but it's okay. Like it's, it's fine. So I'm just going to start a right here and see it punches out that little slot. Well, if I sort of overlap those, what is going on? We sort of overlap them and make sure that this is pushed all the way up gently. I can just work my way down. And every once in a while it gets off just a little bit you can't push too hard like I'm not I'm trying not to push in too hard because it starts to sort of bend this paper that I'm using as my my guide you know one more okay so you can see it, it got a little bit jaggedy right there but I don't honestly I don't think it's a huge thing right um, and then I will do the same thing on the other side. Whoa, just throw your stuff around, Jessica. Okay. So hopefully I can do this one nicely. Have to keep knocking out the paper so I can see. So if you don't have one of these, um, there's definitely other ways of, of doing that. What is going on? Oh, I think it's because of the glue. <laughs> um, you could do this with an X-Acto knife too. And just use a... Um, just use a hole punch. Hang on just a second, guys. Let me concentrate for a second. Okay. Um, <clears throat> here's, what I'm, here's what I'm saying. If you don't have one of these and you want to be able to make, you could just make a slot. Like, it doesn't have to be, you know, that wide like this one is. Um, I like to make, I don't know, I, I feel bad sometimes when I show you guys this kind of stuff and maybe you don't have this tool and... So, you know, just to give you an alternative. Anyway, um, so what I would do if I didn't have that tool, if you do have a crocodile, you can always set your spacing so that if you punch a hole on both sides, you know that it's the same distance from the edge with this little guide, okay? Many of us have crocodiles, right? So if you didn't know that you can adjust that, now you do. <laughs> um, to pull it back, you have to push this this side and then and then pull it. They're kind of there. It's easier to move it forward than backwards. Anyway, and there's a little measurement thing on both sides. So, okay. Um, so I use the large size. And then, so pretend that this, is still is glued on here when I punch the holes. Okay. Just pretend. 
and then get like a piece of chipboard or something like that, right? Like something, something like you could even cut a piece of this chipboard to fit inside this. Okay. So it would be the same height or at least as long as your slot. And then, you know, so you have that in there and then this is glued on here. And then using your ruler, line the ruler up with the right hand side of the hole on the top and the bottom and cut that, cut that side and then scooch it over and line it up with the, the other side of the hole, the left hand side of your hole, and then cut that other side off. And that'll give you a slot like that. Okay. So that's, that's another way that you could, you could do that. Um, without having this tool. Okay, and I have no idea what that thing is even called. Okay, so I have a little bit of kind of jaggedy paper right there that I don't really like, so I'm just going to trim that off right up flush with that. But for some reason, I like this part. I like the paper bag edge on this, so I'm going to leave that. And then I sort of... You know, I wanted to use some fabrics and stuff on the covers um, just because I think it's pretty. And, you know, I mean, if you have fabric scraps, you might as well use them. But I didn't want to cover that, you know, with, with using it on the spine. So I just took some little scraps and glued them onto the edge there. And I will do this one real quick. <clears throat> Just some little, I mean, obviously, you know, I know <laughs> you guys don't necessarily have old quilt scraps, but even just, even just a strip of fabric, I think would be really pretty. So I'm just using the glue stick and I'm just going to layer little pieces on there and some of them I'm going to do at different you know just in random kind of positioning some of them I'll make them higher than others sort of just collaging them on there yeah I love these old scraps. I just work my way down both sides. Sometimes I'll just add a little bit of glue right over the, the fabric too, just to just to be sure that it's, you know, kind of tacked down. I'm gonna stitch on this too, so. And then just right up to the edge. Now I just need another little teeny piece. How about this? This little teeny piece. So I'm just making a little border. I think it would be cute to use um, rick rack too, maybe, or, or maybe even fabric and rick rack. I, I wouldn't want to get it too thick though. Um, I, I kind of want to maintain the, the thickness a little bit thinner, you know, start at one end too I guess even just use these little tiny scraps <laughs> these little guides just make it kind of kind of raggedy you know love this gingham I 
actually. That's right on this on the bend or on the seam. So I'm gonna add a little extra glue on there, even though I'm gonna stitch the spine too. And these these, you know, the threads and stuff, I love that. So I'm not worried about that either. A piece of this plaid. Okay, and that, well, it doesn't go exactly up to the edge. So I'm going to just add, okay, I'll just use this little bit right here. There. Okay, so that looks pretty raggedy, right? Um, let that sort of dry. And even, you know, like all these little scraps from um, making tags and things like that, like this would be perfect to just glue right along the edge of that. And then I'm going to use the pinking shears. So I thought, back up. So I was going to fold this over and, and glue it down on the inside. Um, but I changed my mind. I just thought, no, I, I don't know. For some reason, <laughs> I just didn't really like it. Maybe with some other kind of fabric that would, that would work for me, but I don't know. I just didn't like it. So, so I'm using the pinking shears and just trimming off these little edges. And you know what? I can use these little bits that I'm trimming off on another cover. So I'm saving them. They're precious to me. Those little, all those little scraps. And then I did actually round the corners um, on this one. And I forgot to do that before I, um, before I attached the fabric on this one. So I'm going to just do it. I'm just going to do it with the scissors. I use the, um, corner rounder on the other one. I just like the way it looks. Okay. And I really want to let this dry, but um, I don't really want to put it in my sewing machine yet. So I will let this dry and then I will do a seam along each side of the spine just to sort of define it. Okay. And then I'll oh, see this is the front. And then also what that does is it prevents things that you put in the pockets from sliding all the way across. It kind of gives it like a stopper. And I mean, you could even uh, do another stitch here so that your pocket isn't quite so deep also. Um, and then you're sort of limited to how much of your tag can stick out of this little, this little pocket. So I may come back in and, and do a thumb notch on there too. Like I did on this one on my like prototype one. See, I did a little thumb notch just so that if I use a tag in here, um, I have an easier way of getting it out, you know, so, and I did eyelets. You'll, you'll notice I did some eyelets on this one. Um, but, and I like the way that looks, except that I couldn't do my stitching the way I wanted to with the eyelets in there. So, yeah. So anyway, so that kind of made me mad, but whatever. Um, anyway, so then so I'll do a row of stitching along each side of the spine and then all the way around the edge, including the very edge of the, of the journal. Okay. So it's going to then close this up. Um, I did actually glue it closed first, but I don't think that's really necessary but I'm going to do it again. <laughs> um, 
because I want to glue close that where I rounded the corners. Plus, I think the having that layer of glue in there um, makes it a little bit sturdier when I add the eyelets. And I won't, I won't add the eyelets right at the moment. Um, I'll probably do that at the end. Like that's one of the things I like to do, like right when I'm finishing journals is, is add the closure. So, and plus I don't like it to be in my way. I mean, I could add the eyelets and not add the seam by near or whatever, but I might change my mind on how I want to do the closure. So I might only just do one eyelet. I don't know. I just, that's just how I am. Like I like to do certain things at a certain time and I'm, yeah, anyway. Um, so yeah, so that's what I think I'm going to do for the covers on these little guys. So they will all look sort of similar. Um, and then I want to do some, some of these little, these little rolled flowers too and you know maybe add one on the cover and some buttons and that kind of stuff so you know just maybe position that in a different place on each one or maybe even do um a couple of them and do them different sizes you know with different types of fabric and stuff so anyway yeah and like these little like <laughs> these little bits of um you know, like sewing notions and stuff like that, I think would be really cute on the cover. So, all right. So that's my plan. And uh, I'm sticking to it at this point. And I think I will probably wind up doing something very similar on, on these, except that this one is, I think, is going to get folded in like that. And then, and then I'll make this a pocket, but I don't know. I'm, I don't know. I might do it the same way. <laughs> Who knows? Anything could happen when I get to that point. All right, guys, let me know what you think. And, um, let me know if you're working along and, uh, your kits will be there as soon as possible. Uh, I didn't really do anything much of anything uh, yesterday or the day before, except for like shipping and putting together those fabric bundles and stuff. So I think I will, I will do the, the next farmhouse pack. Uh, I have a bunch of stuff pulled for it already. Um, and remember it's going to be slightly different, you know, because there was some stuff in that, that, that wasn't, you know, I didn't have any more of, so, um, anyway, but I don't, I'm rambling. <laughs> okay, guys, I love you. I will talk to you very soon. I got to go find these links. Okay. Bye for now.